behalf of Rotary Club of Calcutta Aviana, in the absence of our president, Raj Lakshmi Mohan, I, the vice president of the club, Apollo Datta, warmly welcome you. This is a series of health talks that we are undertaking from Rotary Club of Calcutta Aviana. And this particular one is by Dr. Tripathi, and it's called Mongojir Gol, Dr. Tripathi. Uh, with so much of anxiety and stress in the air around, I'm sure you'll find it very useful in some way or the other. Thank you. Sravani, over to you. Distinguished guests, <clears throat> fellow Rotarians, respected PDGs, it is my pleasure and privilege to be hosting today's webinar, Health Talk, Episode 4. Good evening and a very warm welcome to one and all. Today, we have a very interesting and literally a brainstorming session. It's called Mogojir Golpo, or it could be Mogoj Dholai also, with none other than Dr. Ellen Tripathi. Dr. Tripathi is known for his expertise in performing complex surgeries for tumor aneurysms and trauma. He has to his credit over 1500 major surgeries and leads a team of highly experienced neurosurgeons and neurologists in providing advanced care for complex neuro neural disorders, including old age conditions like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and degenerative spinal disease. Dr. Ellen Tripathi has been the director and vice chairman of Medica Institute of Neurological Sciences, Medica Superspecialty Hospitals, Kolkata since 200, uh, 2010 and uh, senior vice chairman from 2017. Sir, a very good evening and a warm welcome to you. Good evening. Thank you very Dr. much. Tripathi. Thank you. Today, we'll, let's talk about the brain because that's a crown jewel of the body. So if I can take your permission to uh, share my slides. So this is the gross anatomy of the brain. Now you can see a small pictures, of course. There are four pictures. The first on the left is a lateral view. That means if you see my brain left side, after opening the skull, you see this frontal lobe, cerebral cortex, parietal lobe, occipital lobe. And one below the occipital lobe is the cerebellum, slightly different from the brain above. And then you see the yellow stem-like thing coming out. That's a brain stem. So basically, the top part of the brain is the main brain. The thinking, doing, working, talking, uh, you know, doing everything that we do uh, as a human being. The bottom part, you know, our movements very carefully, depth, etc. And the cable, which is the brain stem is the main cable coming out of the brain and the nerves going into the brain because we have in and out like in LA, this is basically electrical organ. Uh, the brain is actually an electrochemical organ. Let's make it that way. So that is the first picture. The first picture, the second on the right, right top. If you see my, uh, if you cut my brain like in the middle and see from inside, we call it medial surface. Very important structures are there. I can show with my cursor with the arrow that you see, this is the pituitary gland. This is the pineal gland. This is the brain stem with all the breathing center, heart center, eye control center. There are very important centers in the brain stem. And then the spinal cord continues from here. So this is the cerebellum I was telling you, or the hind brain, hind brain, cerebellum, and brain stem. And this is the top part of the brain, which is the main brain, as I said. See, the, it is color-coded just for pictorial sake. And all these parts are divided by sulci, gyri, you know, or the divisions. And each one has a separate and very special role to play, like we know. The bottom left superior view means if you see from the top, this is the front, this is the back, and these are the areas red, uh, violet, yellow, blue, and you know all the other colors. This is color coded just for 
but actually there is little uh, demarcation and we know that there are various areas in this uh, in the in the brain so some part of the brain does the thinking some part of the brain has the memory emotion sentiments and you know various uh, artistic work various motor functions various uh, spirits high spirits and initiation of you know uh, the drive frontal lobe so we will discuss that as we go on with this presentation and this is the right uh, bottom this is the view from the below if you see my brain from below you it will so here you see all the nerves coming out from the head we call cranial nerves it is the nerve for smell this is the nerve for eyesight going to the eyes on both sides these are the nerves for eye movement these are the nerves for hearing or facial movement for swallowing for speech so there are all these 12 pairs of there are 12 this side 12 that side 12 pairs of cranial nerves or nerves from the brain connected to the special senses i hear nose test and uh, eye movements various uh, eye accommodation and this is as i said swallowing speech so all these nerves are very important we call cranial nerves now this part of the brain we call base of the brain and it is very difficult to operate in this part of the brain which is called skull base surgery or base base of the brain surgery because all these nerves in so many arteries so these are the different parts of the brain now i just want to show you two pictures here don't get confused this is a neuron neuron means the nerve cell the unit of new uh, nervous system is a nerve cell the cell has a body it is action means from here the impulses go out and then join with the dendrites so this is another neuron and these are the dendrites receiving the impulse or the information and then this neuron will give another axon which goes towards the terminals so and this part of the junction is the most important working part of the brain called synapse synapse means two junctions and if you see the picture on the right side this is how this is called a connectome means there are so many connecting fibers between each part of the brain it is an integrated structure you can imagine that when we think we speak we move we, sing, we talk we understand you know the brain is millions and millions of uh, you know connections between the nerve cells and between very specialized part of the brain and called the connection fiber so if you want to tell me you know if you want me to tell you the the, the number of neurons in the brain you see the human brain contains 100 billion neurons very much in number very rich that's why we are supposed to be the advanced uh, you know creation of the god most advanced creation so the 100 billion neurons and average number of synapses the junctions each neuron has at least 7000 junctions you see so they are branches it's like hair from the head the branches they communicate with each other it is very important that the communication between the neurons occur because otherwise you know the brain will not function as it is so if you calculate it the total number of synapses friends synapse is where the thing occurs the memory the emotion the sentiments the all the functions of the uh, new so that's why i said when i started that brain is a neurochemical organ the synapses there are neurotransmitters we'll talk about it so through the neurotransmitters the impulses travel so there is electrical activity there is chemical activity so it's a electrochemical big structure the synapses can number up to 100 to 1000 trillion unthinkable number and we need it and that's what make us makes us the most advanced uh, creation of god now just one uh, interesting uh, hormone organ or endocrine organ called pituitary gland i'm sure most of us have heard about this gland now pituitary gland is very important 
and all the hormones, the growth hormone, the cortisol, the steroids, the sex hormones, the you know pregnancy hormones, lactating hormones, and so many the thyroid hormones, which is very common. There are so many types of hormones. They are all secreted from this pituitary gland, and majority of them from the anterior. This is the anterior in front. This is the posterior. Posterior is basically uh, water con control stops water loss from the body, and also oxytocin. We'll talk about that a little later. And the pituitary itself is controlled by this is the beautiful organ called hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is actually the master. And there are every types of control, the sentiment, the control of body, water, electrolyte, or hormones. The hypothalamus orders the pituitary gland through these connections to secrete that much amount of hormone necessary to keep the body in balance. So friends, if there is any imbalance between different hormones, you know what, what will happen. There will be anger, there will be anxiety, there will be you know, excessive growth of a part of the body, there will be hypertension. So these uh, hormones play a lot of role in keeping the homeostasis or the control of the body in balance. So this is very interesting organ, pituitary and hypothalamus. One thing about the brain, when we will talk about the head injury, I'll show you some pictures. But as you know, the, this is the natural helmet. This is the natural helmet to protect the brain. The skull is nothing but a natural helmet to protect the brain. Of course, when we drive, we have to use the other helmet to prevent the injury to the head. So inside the head, our head, our brain, the volume of the brain is around one and a half liters. Let us say 1500, 1600 in male and slightly less in female, not necessarily female brain is inferior. In fact, they are very superior in various things. We'll talk about it. So inside the brain, inside the head, the contents are fixed. This is what is, there is some amount of blood, about 150, 200 maximum blood. The blood goes and comes out, goes and comes out. If it doesn't go, you get stroke. If it goes and doesn't come out, you also get stroke. We'll talk, uh, talk about stroke. I'll show you some pictures. This is the CSF. CSF is the fluid, the cerebrospinal fluid. It's a brilliant fluid. It's water, water in the brain. Of course, there is water inside the nerve cells, the brain tissue. But this water keeps the brain floating. Otherwise, your head will be bending and falling. So it is the buoyancy of the CSF and the shock absorbing effect. So the brain is surrounded by CSF all around. And if excess of CSF accumulates, excess of fluid accumulates in the brain, there is a condition called hydrocephalus. For that, we drain the CSF. So there is a constant formation and drainage of fluid in the brain. It, the CSF or the fluid comes out from the brain and goes back into the brain to the circulation. There's a beautiful CSF circulation. And if that is disturbed, then you get hydrocephalus. So I, I'm only telling you the very basic things. So that is why when the pressure inside the brain increases, like there is an accident, the brain swells, or there's a clot in the brain, there's a stroke or the tumor. So any, anything added to the brain content, the pressure rises. And if the pressure rises, I will show you what happens. When the pressure in the brain rises, part of the brain shifts. So if you see this picture, this is the, again from the midline, from the medial side or middle side. This is the top brain, this is the bottom brain, this is the brainstem and spinal cord. And this is, these are the ventricles where I said the CSF or the fluid is produced. So it's drained like that. See the arrows? The red arrows means the CSF is getting drained. It's a beautiful circulation of CSF. Now the top structure is a vein we call sagittal sinus. Very important. Big vein of the brain. Very big. The biggest brain, a vein of the brain. Vein means which drains all the dirty uh, blood. Goes to the heart and then to the artery, it is, it is, it's coming back. And that is the water circulation. So this water circulates around the brain, in and out, clip, keeps it clean. So this is a cleaning fluid. And sometimes we do lumbar puncture. You see there is a diagram showing a lumbar puncture. We can take the fluid and test it. Like a spinal tap or lumbar puncture. There is an injection, a needle going into the spine. This is spine. 
we can take the same fluid and test for meningitis or brain hemorrhage or various other complicated things that mostly neurologists deal with. Now, this is what I was trying to tell you. If there is a clot in the brain or there is a tumor, sol means space occupying lesion or a tumor, let us say a tumor. If there is a tumor here, the brain is being pushed. You see the black arrows? The brain on the right, let's say this is the right side. The right side brain is pushed to the left. We call this, see that? The arrows means the brain is being pushed to that. So that part of the brain where the tumor is there, that is also affected, but also this brain is affected. So the problem is in brain, that is why we rush in emergencies. And there's another tumor showing. So there is herniation or part of the brain because brain is very soft. Brain is very soft. It's slight soft rubber like, very soft rubber. So it can go through the holes of the skull called herniation and the person can have fatality from a big herniation here or there. There are two places and there is one more here, three places where the brain shift occurs from left to right. So the beautiful structure of the uh, nature of God, there has things have to be in the midline, things both sides of the brain has to be on either side. If that is why we say if there is a tumor in the right side of the brain, the left side of the body is affected. So this is the opposite. I'm sure you would have read this, but some people say, Dr. Sir, you are saying that right side of the tumor is so left side is paralyzed. Hai? So we tell them, we explain that is how the brain works because all the fibers from the right side, they cross to the left side here in the brain stem. So the so that's why if there is a right side tumor, the left side of the body will be paralyzed and vice versa. So this, so suppose somebody comes with a head injury. This is what we do. The person is anesthetized. He is sleeping. We give him some sedation, some relaxant. The muscles have to be relaxed. He has to put to sleep. The sleep is a big uh, resting thing. Once the brain is injured, then you need to rest the brain. So you give sedatives and relaxants of the, that there is no movement, a person lies like that. This is the tube going through the trachea, it's called endotracheal tube. And there is a feeding tube where we can give feeding through the tube. And there is a temperature through the nose. And sometimes we give nose feeding also. And these are the ECG monitors. And you see that head injury also can have neck injury. So we put a collar. This is a collar to put the neck, prevent the neck from further injuries. So unless the person is conscious, we have to keep the collar till then. So this is the initial management of head injury. And then what we do, we can also do drain the fluid from the brain. I showed you the CSF. When, you, when the pressure is high, we drain some fluid out and then relieve the pressure in, inside the head. We also can see the different metabolites. This is uh, called dialysis of the brain. You see the different met chemicals to see how much is the brain damage and the recovery. And then also we can measure the pressure inside the head called intracranial pressure. So these are the advanced uh, uh, things. And I'll show you some MRI. I don't want to take uh, too long. So this is an MRI picture showing a brain tumor. You see? This is the left side of the brain. And this nerve I was telling you, this is the base of the brain. The nerve on the left side, this is the hearing nerve. So the person would have come with a hearing loss. And because this is in the cerebellum and the brain stem, there's a problem of balancing. So he'll be tilting to the left side. Left side coordination will be a problem. So this is an acoustic neuroma, we call it. But there can be other tumors also. So MRI is showing a brain tumor. I just want to show you some examples. This is MRI. You see beautifully everything, the brain, the nerves, the arteries, and everything, but not the bones. For the bones, you need a CT scan. For the brain, nerve, so this is also MRI of neck. You see, the, this is midline section, or called sagittal picture. So this is the brain, and this is the neck. You see the uh, vertebra of the neck. This is the windpipe, and there is a foot pipe. So this is the spinal cord starting from here. This is brain finishes here. This is the spinal cord starting in the neck, going down all the way. So this is a normal MRI of the 
the vehicle. Now, this is a CT scan. We have color coded. You saw different part, different, there are so many bones coming together and joining together called suture to form the skull. So they are, the development is very interesting. I won't go to details because we, the audience is general audience. And these are the holes through which all the important nerves come out, as I showed you. The best. So this is a CT scan, and we are seeing, seeing the bone window because we can change the window and see the brain and the bone in the CT scan also. So this is a CT scan, for example, skull base. Now, what do we do? As neurosurgeons, we are supposed to do surgery on the brain and spine. Since we are talking about the brain this evening, the two things I'm holding inside our operation theater, we have two big operation theaters. With, I'll show you some pictures. This one is called operating microscope. We operate, I'll show you how we, I, we operate. And this is called a navigation tool. Like you have navigation in the car, GPS tool. So this is the camera, which is uh, looking at the head of the patient. And we can get this image previously, previous day and put in the MRI here. And then with these two cameras, we can navigate, know exactly where to go. So small incision called minimally invasive surgery, and we can remove the tumor with very little damage to the normal structure. Operating microscope, navigation, very important for brain tumor. See, I am operating here with the assistant. I'm seeing there, but operating here. This is the screen showing the brain tumor surgery. And this is the operation theater. So this is operating microscope. I'm seeing there, but operating. So we need to have hand and eye coordination. This is what we do training. We have postgraduate training or DNB in neurosurgery in our hospital. And already we have three candidates. One has passed out. So we train them for hand eye coordination. So this is microsurgery for a brain tumor. Now, this is the navigation I was telling you. This is one of the machines. We had now we have another machine stealth. So this is the navigation means from outside. If you put a pointer, you will know how, which part of the brain you are going to. So if there is a tumor or this is hydrocephalus, I think we are trying to put a, a shunt here. So they, we can see the ventricle inside and exactly know where to go. So this is the operation theater, modular OT. Everything is digital control. We have lights, this is the camera, and this is the operation table, this is the anesthetic machine, this is neuro monitor, this is the screen, everybody can see the operation. This is the endoscope trolley, this is one operating microscope, this is another operating microscope, this is one navigation, this is another endoscope trolley. So you need all types of equipments to run a proper. This is one interesting case I usually saw. This patient came from Bhutan, you see the person's head, there is an arrow. Archery is the national game of uh, Bhutan. And they play with the archery, with the arrows. And one arrow put, went here, came out there. Through the head, from left side, this is the left side of the head, this is the ear, this is the neck. And this is the person was air uh, flown by air ambulance from Bhutan, a chartered, special chartered plane, actually. And we got this... Uh, arrow out and he is actually a MP now, a minister. And he, he keeps in touch with us. And so this is the arrow which is taken out from the head and the person went back, now is a minister. This is what I was, this is a CT scan showing a big brain clot. This is stroke. He's 69 years old, gentleman. And this is a big stroke, see the clot. What we do, we open the head here and remove the clot as much as it is possible so that the, see the, the brain is shifted. This is what I was telling you. Left side of the brain is shifted to the right, this much. This is the midline. This should have been here. Because of the clot, there is a shift. So if this shifts, then all these important structures in brain stem gets affected. The person will be paralyzed and also can die, die from this big clot. So we took this clot out and this is after the operation, you see this operation, we went through the, uh, the cranial tumor, removed a part of the bone, and then clot is removed. Little bit of clot is left. Because you go too much, then there will be bleeding again. So brain is a very delicate structure. And now, I will just finish up quickly. 
this is the time as we discussed before that the corona has really changed the world there is lot of anxiety from various things like somebody has lost the job we are working from home the uh, disease has affected so many people somebody's friend relative distant relative has died or become you know infected so we are distancing we are not meeting we are not going anywhere so lot of anxiety from various things the best thing i would tell you is that stay active don't worry about it this is going to pass i'm sure there will be a vaccine very soon and treatment we are already giving in medica we have the maximum number of covid patients in this part of the world and we have seven ecmo machines and we have saved so many people i am right proud to say that our ecmo department the ctbs department under dr sarkar and our an, uh, intensive care department under dr tanmay banerji dr abhiral roy dr saha and all the beautiful experienced doctors are saving so many lives today there are more than 180 patients admitted so people who have minor disease we don't need to admit them into hospital they can stay at home with quarantine or in annexes like our hospital we have taken a guest house a big hotel guest house there are rooms there so we can put people in there if they are worried but the thing is that you people who do not get the infection they should stay active and try to avoid contact i will show you the important things that we all practice to stay away from the infection you need to do regular exercise i spend one hour in our hospital gym every day so you need to do regular exercise which is good for your physical and emotional health no alcohol or you know very there is no socialization anyway so you can't say that no i had to drink because there is no socialization no one is going anywhere no one is coming the clubs are just recently opened so alcohol very limited no smoking that we all know now caffeine is good for memory but if you have too much of anxiety you losing sleep then you cut down on your ca caffeine and as we all know sleep is the best healer so 6 7 hours of sleep is very important for any adult if you do not get sleep you have anxiety at the top if you can meditate it's very important that you keep your nerves cool meditation really those those of you i do meditation every day at home with my wife and it is very important to have some kind of you know spiritual activity if you if you can or just sit quiet and meditate there is no substitute for a healthy diet lots of fruits nuts very little uh, meat or no meat fish lot of fish those you can amader uh, bangla ekane lot of fish it is there i also love eating fish now if you can, if you are a vegetarian of, of course you can take nuts and fruits fresh vegetable fruits the very important and avoid the fatty food the you know oily food all that should be avoided and you practice deep breathing like pranayam if you can do it is good for relaxation of the brain now anger is certain thing that you should avoid because when you are angry you lose your senses i don't want to go too much into it but mostly i wanted to show you that this basically with the hormones a lot of hormones secreted when somebody gets angry and that makes you excited you lose your control you say things that you should not be saying the next moment when the hormone levels come down you realize i should not have said that but so very important to control your anger and these are the hormones so we know this uh, uh, i say bloody virus well, is more than bloody actually a, a corona virus you know the spike proteins and there are various uh, uh what going on so the brain also is affected by corona because you can get a stroke you can get blood clots in the brain the main arteries the veins can be clotted and frank strokes brain hemorrhage also and fits convulsions blindness so all this can occur from covid this is it is can showing a brain hemorrhage we had this patient and so i just want to finish with this slide that although we know we have experienced those of us are still lucky to have not got the infection we must have practiced because this is in the community everywhere you know this virus is there so hand wash mask 
and social distance. So I say medical super specialty hospital, MSH. M for mask, S for social distance, and H for hand wash. These three are best prevention that you can think of. You can use any type of mask, but uh, for medical people, M N95 is important. For non-medical people, any good mask is important. Unless you have an infection in the family or society, you should be away from them. Certain medicines are there. We use all this, but what we are looking at is the vaccine. Now let's pray to God. And we are very uh, much close to Durga Puja. Let us all pray to Ma Durga to bless us with some vaccine. Um, you, I'm sure you know that from the news, so many countries, so many types of vaccines, so many farmers are working. Let's hope that the vaccine is available and this uh, pandemic is controlled. Till then, let us practice. So I think I will stop sharing my slides. And then uh, uh, I'm sure I have taken a lot of your time, but I hope that uh, it has been helpful. And I'm ready to you know, uh, open the discussion thank questions. Uh, Sravani, thank you so much for being patient. Thank you, doctor. It was, it, it was a very, very enlightening and informative session. And now we have a lot of questions. Good evening, Dr. Tripathi. Uh, my question, yeah, good evening. Uh, my question is when uh, memory loss is there, which part of the brain is affected and uh, how can we uh, just take care of it? Yeah, so memory, uh, this, the storage of memories uh, in a part called hippocampus. Okay. So it is a temporal part of the brain. As I showed you the picture, you might have seen the temporal lobe or in the temple. Towards the midline, towards the center. You see all these important structures like memory, emotion, sentiment, you know, so many other functions that we very sensitive functions of brain, they are concerned, they are concentrated towards the center. So that if there is injury, they are still protected. You see what I'm saying? So right. memory is stored in hippocampus. But when you say memory, there are various types of memory. There's a working memory, there's a short-term memory, there's long-term memory, there's a mnemonics, a nominal memory, so many types of memories are there. So I would say the memory is stored in the hippocampus, but for processing of memories, for, for example, you remember a good smell in your childhood. You mm -hmm. remember a good song, right. you know, if you mm -hmm. want to sing the song. Right. Or you, 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 you remember certain sights, so a semantic memory or a visual memory. So there are a lot of... Right. connections in the brain like i showed you the various parts so that those parts are also involved in processing the memory and main right. you store it but you also want to bring it out right so to remember it so you ah. encode it you store it thank you very much manjula ji yeah yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sam. That was a uh, good reply. And I just wanted to uh, know that uh, how can we improve? Does some uh, particular uh, exercise yeah. or some meditation improve your memory? The, I, I mentioned some points about anxiety. The very yeah. important for those points are also helpful in memory. If you take nuts, you uh, have caffeine is good for memory. Like people get a, a cup of coffee in the morning. Or before mm -hmm. a meeting, you know, before anything important, if you take a, a coffee. And the dry nuts are very important. And vegetable, okay. fresh, fresh fruits are very important. And regular exercise, meditation, yoga, you know, and uh, thinking okay. good, good things, having, having good friends. So those are the things which, uh, and mm -hmm. good sleep, very important. Like, remember, yes, the day before exam, we, we must have good sleep. Many people wake up. But that's, I mm -hmm. used to sleep very well before exams. No wonder mm -hmm. I was a topper in all my exams and had my <laughs> all, all, right. all the gold medals of university Good. I backed. And my wife yeah. would know, of course, uh, after marriage, that uh, I used to sleep very well the day before my exam. Because uh, it's very important, uh, you know, during the exam or in the exam, what you do is what you already learned. What is the point of right. being anxious the night before? Because if you do not sleep, mm -hmm. as you, I'm, I'm sure mm -hmm. all of us have experienced, the mm -hmm. night before, if you slept well, 
your exam goes very well you know right the sleep ah, is very true. sleep is a healer the brain heals during sleep mm -hmm. and when we are sleeping the rest of the body only the consciousness is sleeping but the rest of the body is working you see there is repair yeah. going on and yeah. so many things get better in the morning when you wake up you know mm -hmm. so sleep is very important i'm saying that so to to have a good sleep also you need to work this way that way have a disciplined life food exercise you know uh, those are the things very important for memory as well thank you thank you dr sir even if you get a very high fever normal viral fever your brain stops working for some time you don't like to do complicated work and you know complicated job or uh, any skilled job you you feel tired so any virus infection this is a very unique virus its severity is its penetration into any structure is much more than one ever experienced in any other virus so the you feel very tired exhausted you don't have that energy you don't have that consciousness clarity of thought the brain fog the decision making judgment initiation drive everything is affected because of the virus because mainly the blood circulation and there is also a viral encephalitis with it encephalitis means in, in inflammation of the brain so the nerve cells i showed you the neurons they get swollen the synapses stop working so any time the brain gets swollen uh, there is a swelling of the nerve cells the synapses stop working because they need space a lot of water goes out of the circulation and damages these important connections so you get confusion disorientation anxiety depression lack of concentration lack of judgment so your intellect goes down and to build it back it takes long time okay thank you and next question is from amina mehta Hello, Namaskar, Amina Ji. Uh, doctor, my son is suffering from uh, epilepsy. Uh, when he was eight year old, uh, so he had his first seizures in, in sleep. Now he's thirteen years, and he he's been having a whole lot of medicines. Right now he's on five medications, and previously he used to have at least once a month, and then it increased to twice a month. Now it's having a seizure, a partial seizure, not convulsion, but partial seizure almost like every third day. Yeah. So I don't see any uh, respite after having so many medicines. He's having five sets of medicines. Yeah. Um, first thing is, I'm very sorry that uh, he's suffering and. Uh, I'm sure you must have seen a good epileptologist or a good neurologist. I'm showing him in Bangalore, in okay. Parijama, under uh, Doctor Arud, Surendra Arud. Yeah, you don't have to name uh, the doctor here because okay. you, know, uh, you can. Uh, I don't want to say, but a, a good epileptologist. Uh, what is important in epilepsy is: uh, is the MRI okay, or there is some lesion in the MRI? Did the Pardon, MRI doctor? show anything? Yes, doctor. He uh, he has a birth yes. defect, heterotopia. Right. So I, I was left to... frontal lobe heterotopia. Okay. So and the EEG has proved that that is the uh, origin of the seizures. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I think the uh, now there is a role of surgery in certain situations in epilepsy. Doctor, we had gone for that also. We had gone for that also yeah. last year. I got him admitted in uh, hospital for uh, surgery purpose, but then the sparks are coming yeah. from uh, too many areas, from occipital areas also. So the doctor ruled exactly. out surgery. That's why I asked you absolutely. So if the uh, origin of the uh, convulse, you know, the fits are multifocal, then it's a problem. And uh, what is it like? Uh, what is it like? Uh, normal activity, mental activity. How much is studied? No, he is in class seven activity? now, but uh, his studies is going uh, down. His memory is going down. His concentration is less, and, and behavioral pattern yeah. is very aggressive. 
right and uh, is he up and about himself does he require any physical help no he doesn't require physical help otherwise he is uh, very active yeah so uh, definitely there are uh, various uh, uh, treatment options here and one thing is that i'm sure that you are stuck to one uh, epileptologist and the uh, drugs are taken very very uh, religiously without stopping Absolutely. and whatever whatever dose he has given now the, the, this is the problem so sometimes we offer various types of surgeries in this kind of cases i think i don't want to name anything now because that will misguide you uh, since they have ruled out the surgery for the time being uh did they uh, consult did they uh, discuss the vagal nerve stimulation there is a surgery okay. called vagal nerve stimulation and the left side of the neck we put a electrode and there is a, a impulse generator it's called vns sometimes if the seizure is multifocal vagal nerves because the other operations are very destructive operations like commissurotomy hemispherectomy it is not done if somebody doesn't have a physical uh, debility if you physically well then because those operations also carry risks and uh, i would suggest you can discuss with the doctor about a vagal nerve stimulation because he's still 13 years okay. old okay uh, that may be an option other than that i think uh you know five anti convulsants i understand very difficult and with a behavioral problem it also need a neuropsychiatry backup so i think vagal nerve stimulation can be an option you can discuss with your doctor okay, oh, okay. Thank, thank you, you very much maybe god bless you okay next mr navneet banerji if there is a clot is it advisable to operate or keep the patient on medicines yeah uh, the clots uh, are of various sizes you know uh, very small or small clots no surgery with a very big mm-hmm. clot also sometimes we have to operate but the results are not good the most important thing in uh, neurosurgery about a clot surgery is if the person is deteriorating means getting worse during your observation and the size the clot is sizable then we offer surgery it is uh, there in the important part of the brain compressing vital structures like i showed you the picture with the brain shifts mm-hmm. it is pushing the brain right. and to reduce the mass effect we operate and sometimes we keep it is called decompressive craniectomy it means sometimes we keep the bone flap out because the brain swelling occurs and then we put it back after 3 months or so uh, the process called cranioplasty So yes mm-hmm. uh, if the brain clot is compressing the brain and producing neurological deficits then we offer surgery otherwise medicines okay so very common we almost uh, at the moment i think we have at least 10 patients with brain stroke and brain clots <clears throat> some we have operated some we have not some we have treated with medicines and discharged like that okay uh the and the question we have is is blood sugar a cause of stroke absolutely so the two commonest causes of stroke is diabetes and high blood pressure two commonest causes okay uh, the other one is uh, can heart problem lead to brain stroke absolutely so see if there is a stroke in the brain where the artery is blocked okay mm-hmm. this the clots can come from the heart exactly as the heart is pumping and there could be some small clots generated inside the heart due to either endocarditis infection or uh, certain conditions there then uh, you know the clots can go and dislodge uh, lodge inside the arteries in the brain and produce a stroke and also people who have heart valves operated mm-hmm. you know they change the valves in the heart and they give certain medications even after the angioplasty or putting stents or mm-hmm. a bypass surgery they give the antiplatelet medicine ecosprin clopidogrel elicis all those medicines 
those medicines also can cause bleeding in the brain so sometimes we have a patient now who has last week an angioplasty and they are giving the uh, blood thinning tablets but he also has a brain clot so if we continue the uh, uh, blood thinning tablets the clot will increase and da go, go, uh, do damage to the brain if we stop the antiplatelets or the blood thinning tablets the heart stent will block so we have a dilemma now so what we try to do we try to explain this to relatives and give the smallest dose of ecosprin taking a risk of the clot increasing you see what i'm saying so the the medicine which is good for the heart is not necessarily good for the brain as far as the clot is concerned followed by this we have another question that uh, uh, whether ecosprin or any kind of uh, similar um the drugs are recommended after 50 not really not really yeah okay. because it also has the side effect you know earlier they used okay. to say one ecosprin a day keeps the doctor in you know, all those funny things with unless person mm -hmm. has a chest pain or ecg changes uh, it is not advisable okay. not as visible okay the importance of vitamin d in today's uh, challenging times as majority city dwellers have deficiency so yeah you see vitamin d as we know mm -hmm. uh, we get it from sunlight and how many of us mm -hmm. go to the sunlight you know so we are either indoors or staying inside air conditioning so vitamin d is very important in muscle and nerve functions and many okay. patients come to our opd or you know Uh, consult us where you see the vitamin d level is very low they have mm. pain here aches and the pains all over the body people get mri done somebody says do operation but we check their vitamin d level is very low and you give them vitamin d they get better you know okay okay many patients suffer from mild to moderate fear anxiety confusion fatigue and memory loss after covid can this be recovered with time i think you've addressed addressed this yeah, also i've may, mentioned that yeah all right and uh, one more question we have here is just uh, yeah reason of migraine and investigation and treatment so uh, migraine definite cause is not known okay okay there are various hypotheses explain you know suggested vascular theory uh, this theory that theory and the uh, neurotransmitters and this and all that but basically uh, the exact cause is not known and that is why the, the treatment of migraine is very difficult but there are standard uh, treatments available there are standard medicines available the interesting fact about migraine is it can run in families and ladies are more affected mm -hmm. if their mom had migraine they get the chances high and the uh, in, instigating factors are the factors which trigger trigger factors we call it triggering factors like sunlight mm -hmm. uh, you know staying hungry if you are fasting you get a headache anxiety brings some <laughs> migraine different types of food ice cream cheese this and other can bring migraine. so if you know what causes the migraine then you got the treatment because you stop caffeine you know but if you do not know what caused it then it is a problem and severe migraine is very painful you know so we give very specific treatment for migraine there are various preventive tablets available there are some nasal sprays also available and with that migraine thing is once it is starting we use the tablet like rizatriptan or jolmis spray if you wait a little bit once it starts it is not going to stop it will take long time and mild migraines can be also treated with paracetamol you know you take paracetamol it will well, but very severe migraine you need the cyvelium or the clonazepam the propranolol indoral topiramate some anti convulsant sodium valproate combinations of those beta blockers and all that 
you know, and, and all these sprays, uh, these are prescribed for migraine. So it's a very difficult. Uh, Sir, I have one question. Yeah. Go Sir, on. one related question to this. Uh, is, is Botox a treatment for migraine? Yeah, sometimes that is also prescribed uh, for Botox, for migraine. So, like I said, if, if we knew the exact cause, then we'll hit it with the exact treatment. There are various possibilities. This may happen, that may happen. Even severe, there is another headache called cluster headache, which is very serious headache. Cluster headache. This most severe form of headache, actually. And some people it becomes so it is becomes so painful they attempt suicide this and other and also we sometimes do deep brain stimulation for cluster headache you know not in India but somewhere in England I know Dr Aziz my friend who with whom we do the Parkinson's treatment he has treated some cluster headaches uh, with the stimulators in hypothalamus so it's very painful so migraines by and large can be treated but some of them can also have a paralysis of the body called hemiplegic migraine. They can have eye changes, sudden blindness, ophthalmoplegic migraine, visual migraine, all types of migraines. Sir. Usually neuromedicine doctors treat migraine. You know, when they come to us, we do a CT scan or MRI and there is no tumor. So we usually send it to neuromedicine doctors, our colleagues in our team. Okay. I'm sorry. There's a question. Is dementia, yeah. is dementia a neurological disorder and memory loss gets affected with age? Why and what is the relevance? So, yes. Uh, dementia is, is a very common thing in elderly. You see, uh, mm -hmm. we all know that no one is immortal. And all cells of the body, including the hair, which turns gray, everything becomes old. You know, you look at your picture when you were a child Excellent. and look at your picture now, you say, my goodness, I, I was not that. Uh, you know? So uh, that's the truth. So all cells of the body are aging. And brain, because it is probably like I told you the connectome, I showed you how many things happen in brain. Mm -hmm. So, God has given us a lot of uh, neurons and synapses, but there is a limit. And yes, uh, now the thing is that the more sensitive part of the brain becomes, you know, slowly degenerate. So, uh, like you said, Alzheimer's disease, this is basically a group of neurodegenerative disease, like Alzheimer's or Parkinson's disease, motor neuron disease, or various types of amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, all that. So those are neurodegenerative diseases. Now, old age memory loss is different. Like all of us will forget few things. At you know, there is a limit to which your brain remember things. And you know what? Unless you unless you empty the memory areas, you cannot put in new information. Na? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, all this information gets stuck. It's like your old uh, things in your house. Mm -hmm. Unless you clear those, you cannot mm -hmm. have new memories. But clearing the old memories in the brain is very difficult. Difficult. You may not remember it, but it is very difficult to take out. So they get all occupied, you know. Mm -hmm. Slowly, slowly, how many things we learn every day, every moment, you know. Mm -hmm. So all these nerve cells get occupied and there is no, so access is denied, you know. The hard disk is full, but you cannot access it, you know. So old age memory loss is normal, but Alzheimer's mm -hmm. memory loss is not normal. Okay. So there is a very rapid degeneration of those, especially cells, neuro, neurons in the hippocampus. Uh, okay. And all these central structures I showed you in the picture, you know. So a person doesn't know the name, his own children, where he is uh, there, mm -hmm. his own house. Mm -hmm. He gets lost. He cannot go to the toilet. Mm -hmm. He cannot dress himself. He cannot eat. So gradually more and more severity of Alzheimer's. The person requires a lot of care rather than medicines. And unfortunately, 
uh, if it is Alzheimer's or Parkinson's for that matter, they are not curable. Mm. A lot of work is going on mm. about Alzheimer's with the tau protein and you know the amyloid the plaques. A lot of work mm. is going on. There are some medicines like Aristep and Mantadine and all that. Uh, okay. Some studies shows playing chess or bridge helps in dementia. Do you agree Absolutely. that a few brain yeah, stimulating yeah, yeah. So you need to, like I, I we discussed, you need to keep your brain active. Making mm -hmm. friends, going to clubs, play, mm -hmm. play, playing bridge or, you know, crosswords mm -hmm. or sudoku or mm -hmm. whatever you like. Mathematics, okay. some form of okay. hobby, music, instrument. Socialize. Mm -hmm. Keep on interacting with people. So okay. it's like mm -hmm. mental exercise. You know, if, if you do not exercise, the normal person also become lazy and dull. Okay. Mental exercise, you know. Okay. So talking, uh, making friends, enjoying mm -hmm. certain things, hobbies. You know, these are this, mm -hmm. this is very very good for brain. Very good. Okay. And so one last question: that uh, what is, what is the treatment for Parkinson's disease then? So, uh, Parkinson's the main treatment uh, is that because the dopamine of the brain is depleted, the main medicine okay. is to give some dopamine, like Sindopa, or other mm -hmm. medicines which help in dopamine function. Mm -hmm. Main thing in Parkinson's is the movement disturb because there is tremor person cannot hold right. a glass of water to drink or is so stiff yes. that he cannot move mm -hmm. and he cannot walk while walking is like running and falling down you know mm -hmm. so the tremor rigidity and the lack of coordination or the stiffness that is the main thing and so these medicines primarily are aimed to control the movement motor motor symptoms but in addition to this movement disorder, there is also many things associated with Parkinson's, like dementia and excess salivation. And there are various types of Parkinson's that with all of side effects of medicines, the dyskinesia. So mainly the treatment is aimed at controlling the motor functions or the movement disorders. And when the medicine fails or the dose of medicine is so high, like mm -hmm. Sindopa or similar, that the side effects become more disabling. There we do the deep brain stimulation, putting the, mm -hmm. like the pacemaker for the brain. We mm -hmm. put an electrode in the brain and there's a impulse or pulse generator and we control the move. So this is dramatic. I wish we had time, I would have shown some videos where the uh, movement disorder on the operation table, we have, we have done some cases here suddenly stops and the hand becomes numb. So this is magic. But there are a lot of selection criteria. So yes, Parkinson's has both um, medical and surgical treatment. Most of the medical treatment is aimed at movement uh, control, abnormal movement control. And surgery can be offered in very selective cases. Okay. Uh, so uh, yeah, another question, how to, though you, I think you have answered this, how to keep the brain active when one becomes old. So you've mentioned yeah. already that brain needs to be kept active through some stimulating yeah. exercises. Um, I think it was a very, very uh, informative session. Mogojer Kotha, we had, we have been brainwashed, I think, by now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, over to Sheila for a formal vote of thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shravani. It was a wonderful webinar you had with us. It was so very informative. And we had a lot, learned a lot how complex our brain is. Sometimes we say, you're such a brainless person, little do we realize how much goes to the brain of ours. It's so quite complicated. And for the lovely tips, excellent tips of given us to combat stress, which is really very important today's day and times. We hopefully will try and follow everything you've told us. And of course, all the COVID precautions you also told us about. I think the end of this day, everybody's going to start playing chess and doing everything to keep our brain intact and keep it strong and vital and throbbing all through our lives now. 
Thank you very much. And I also take this opportunity to thank each and every participant for attending this webinar. Thank you very much. And hope to see you once again, sir, with little more tips that you can give to us. Thank you very much. Thank you.